November 20th, 2009, 25-year-old Francisco Paco Rodriguez is fighting for a championship at the Blue Horizon in Philadelphia. This is his shot, his moment. He would tell me, babe, I haven't felt better than how I feel today. He, he would say, this fight, I, I really feel good. And I'm going to come back with the belt. In a hospital three miles away, 22-year-old Ashley Owens is also fighting for her life. Her lungs are barely functioning. She writes goodbye letters to her family. Dear Dad, you always told me it is best to remember all the good times. Paco enters the ring vital and hopeful. Breathless and weak, Ashley thinks about the thing she'll never do. I will be in heaven watching over you and waiting for the day that we can all be together. I love you, Dad. Francisco El Nino Azteca Rodriguez. A proud Mexican-American, Paco Rodriguez has followed his father and older brothers into the fight game. In Chicago, where he grew up, he's a five-time Golden Gloves champion. Now, El Nino Azteca is aiming for a professional title belt. Just being a fighter and, you know, having people chant his name, you know, El Nino Azteca, Paco. Paco, 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 Paco. And that's what he loves especially when he was in the ring. Outside the ring, what Paco loves most are his wife, Sonia, and daughter, Jeanette. That was his pride and joy there. He was uh, prouder to be a father than to be a boxer. I uh, never thought I'd find the guy of my dreams. And when I met Paco, I said I was really wrong. He had everything that I needed in a man. In September 2009, Paco finds out he'll get his title shot. At 14 and two, he'll be fighting for the first time as a father. I didn't want him to box anymore because I, I would tell him, you know, we have the baby now. And he would tell me, no, babe, I'm always well prepared. Nothing's gonna happen to me, don't worry. Paco arrives in Philadelphia two days before his championship fight. Hours before he'll climb through the ropes, he makes a boxer's pilgrimage. The kid was so excited. He was gleaming. He was confident. Couldn't wait to fight night. And I mean, it was, it was, this is what the kid wanted. He wanted to be a champion. And I must say, very good. Ashley Owens wanted to be a teacher but she was born with a genetic disease, cystic fibrosis, which filled her lungs with fluid, making every breath a struggle. She was only expected to live to the age of 12. I think you should never waste a second of your life. By late 2009, Ashley is 22 and in critical condition. Her right lung collapses on November 13th. One week later, on the night Paco Rodriguez is fighting in Philadelphia, Doctors say her only hope for survival is a double lung transplant. Neither of us knew what the future was going to be for her. You know, I looked up at her and I said, you know, I want to be there for everything. And I want you to know that whatever happens here, you know, I'm with you through it. And then I proposed. She got teary-eyed, cried a little bit, and I was like, yes. Four hours later, 800 hardcore boxing fans are on hand to see Paco fight for the USBA Super Bantamweight crown. <laughs> Near the end of the first round, Tion Kennedy staggers Paco twice. In the second round, Paco takes the initiative. The fight tilts back and forth. But by the 10th round, Paco is defenseless, and the fight is stopped. Battered, defeated, he retreats to his corner. As he was sitting down on the stool, he had one hand on the ring. And I looked at him, I said, Paquito, look at me, look at me. How do you feel? He goes, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. And I noticed that his eyes rolled back. 
And I just kept screaming at him. And he wouldn't answer. His body just went limp. An ambulance takes him to Hahnemann University Hospital a mile away. Paco's brain is swelling and bleeding. He undergoes three hours of emergency surgery. His wife, Sonia, who was at home in Chicago with a baby, rushes to the hospital early the next morning. I didn't even know he was in a coma. He had tubes running all over him. A machine that was pumping him. It wasn't what I was expecting to see. What did the doctors tell you? They... They said, we're sorry, but... There's no possibility of him making it. Yo, en ese momento le, le pedí a Dios que, que no se lo fuera a llevar. Que yo le cambiara mi vida por la de él. Entonces, a lo mejor Dios dijo, pues, Lo necesito y me lo llevo. At 7.42 p.m. on Sunday, November 22nd, two nights after collapsing in the ring, Paco Rodriguez is declared brain dead. Three hours later, a representative from the Gift of Life donor program asks Paco's family to consider donating his organs. I remember you looking over to my sister-in-law and, and uh, telling her I would think it'd be very disappointing to see that all the hard work that Paco did to keep his body in the shape that he kept it, his heart to let it stop beating. I think we should give someone else a chance now that he doesn't have one. He wanted to be a hero, and he would always tell me that. So I said, you know, if that was his, his goal in life, then, you know, we're going to do it for him. Over the next two days, Paco Rodriguez would become that hero. Ashley Owens received his lungs. What do you remember about the feeling when you woke up? I noticed that I could breathe like, and deep for the first time ever, and it was right away. That was amazing. When my lungs were bad, I couldn't do anything, so I was so weak, and I just want to push myself. I want to see how far I can go, how far I can get this new body to take me. Paco's heart went to 26-year-old Alexis Sloan, a boxing fan from Philadelphia who'd often attended fights at the Blue Horizon the site of Paco's final bout. Born with a genetic condition, by 2007, Alexis's heart could no longer pump on its own. She'd spend more than two years connected to a medical device 24 hours a day. Paco's heart gave Alexis her freedom. I remember being outside and it was raining like really, really hard. And, um... I always say when it rains, the angels are crying, you know? And I said, Paco, you can stop crying now. And the rain just stopped immediately, you know? And the sun came out. Paco's liver was flown to Baltimore for 25-year-old Megan Kingsley. Once a highly accomplished youth swimmer, dozens of benign tumors in her brain compromised her muscle development, balance, and hearing. After nine years with no cure, 
she tried an experimental drug treatment to shrink the tumors. Instead, it shut down her liver. She received Pacos with only days to live. I've been back to the hospital many, many times since my surgery due to rejection and viruses. And when I'm, I'm really ill, I'll kind of rub my liver and, and I'll say, come on, Paco, like, please work with me. Let's get through this. You know, I want to get out and live my life.